At Gen Con in 2012, it was announced that Margaret Weiss Productions had acquired an RPG license from Marvel Comics and would be releasing a superhero RPG under their newly revamped Cortex system, cleverly named Cortex Plus. The initial plan was to release a basic game and have the expansions primarily focus on event comics in the Marvel Universe. Civil War, Annihilation, and Age of Ultron were brought up as potential entries. After a few months, the basic version of the game was released followed by a Civil War premium, premium being basic plus the Civil War materials, as well as supplements for Civil War focusing on the 50 States Initiative, X-Men, and the Young Avengers slash Runaways. Hyped up by comic book blogs and RPG blogs, it received quite a bit of acclaim, receiving the Golden Any for Best Rules and the Silver Any for Best Game and Product of the Year. Then, near the end of April, Marvel pulled the plug on the project, supposedly citing that the Civil War books didn't sell as well as they had hoped and in the process had the PDFs pulled entirely from Drive-Thru RPG in six days, canceling the print version of Annihilation in the process. Thousands of nerds lamented the news, but did the game truly deserve the plug? Let's find out. Let's start with the layout. Marvel Heroic Role-Playing, hereafter referred to as MHR, is a full-color softcover book which runs at 227 pages long, using a universal sidebar in the outside for most of the book. Most of the artwork is pulled from various comics in the Marvel Universe, and all of it not only looks great but blends into the layout fairly well. That said, there are a few cases of reused character art, but such cases are fairly rare and unnoticeable unless you're deliberately looking for them. The format is pretty clear, though it could be considered a bit crowded at times, not helped by the amount of sidebars throughout the book. A bigger issue for me, however, is the naming gimmick they went with for the page numbers. Instead of a set of numbers spread out along the book, it opts for an abbreviated version of the two major sections. OM for Operations Manual, the core rules, and BR for Breakout, the sample adventure. This isn't as bad as, say, Alpha Omega, and there is an index in the back, but I feel this was unnecessary and complicates a book that is very simple to go through. MHR uses a dice pool system. However, unlike most dice pool games such as Shadowrun or The World of Darkness, there are no hits versus a target number, nor is there an attribute slash skill relationship. Instead, MHR uses a series of die codes to represent the strengths of character abilities, skills, and resources, generating an average of 3 to 7 die from a series of tags of various die codes representing tiers of abilities. It should be noted that a higher die code isn't a surefire measure of being better, just having a greater range of potential effects. After rolling a pool, the two highest die are added up for the result, while an additional die is set aside as the effect die which determines the degree of your success if you happen to succeed. As a result, the mechanic places the did you succeed result separately from the how well did you do, something that's admittedly hand-waved in many games. It should be noted that all rolls are either contested or rolled against the Doom Pool, which we'll get into later. The mechanic also adds an element of risk-reward, since you have to decide whether you want a better chance at succeeding, or take a smaller result for a better effect. Fortunately, there are many wrinkles that can be thrown into the system to skew things for or against you. The primary wrinkle is opportunities. Every time someone rolls a 1 on any die type, then the opposing player or GM can activate it as an opportunity, gaining either a plot point if it's a player, or adding the activated die type to the doom pool if it's a GM. It should be noted that the game places emphasis on effects, which play a large role into the way damage works and in the use of assets and complications. Both are two sides of the same coin and act as MHR's situational bonus slash penalty in other games. These can be generated by either side and would be added to the relevant die roll by the player or watcher when appropriate. Both are two sides of the same coin and act as MHR's situational bonus slash penalty in other games. These can be generated by either side and would be added to the relevant die roll by the player or watcher when appropriate. Plot points and the doom pool are this game's extra effort mechanic, though the latter also acts as a generic opposition when not rolling against anything specific. The doom pool is slightly more complicated than plot points, but it's evened out by the back and forth nature of the game. Keeping with its narrativist focus, the game does not use initiative or turn order systems. Turns are passed to each player depending on who acts last, though the GM may interrupt at any time using the doom pool. In addition, because the mechanics are effect based, there isn't an HP or wound system as much as there is an effect die based track for stress and trauma. The character sheets in this game are referred to as data files. Each data file will have have affiliations, distinctions, power sets, and specialties on them. Affiliations represent what type of group, or lack thereof, you're most comfortable with, be it as a lone wolf, solo, with a partner, buddy, 
or as part of a larger group, team. Aside from the difference in die code, the primary factor is whether or not you can accept assets and aid from allies, and what specific allies can do so for you. Distinctions are minor quirks about one's character, which can be used in a situation that benefits the character as a d8, or negatively as a d4, gaining a plot point if done so in the latter sense. Power sets are a character's grouping of ability die, special effects, and limits. These will be the primary die you'll be using in rolls, and much like the majority of the game's mechanics, they have double-edged swords and weaknesses that you can risk to gain possible advantages. Special effects tend to be a more tactical use of powers in a given set, focusing on things like boosting a die at the expense of another, adding effect die, or enhancing specific effects inflicted. Limits are the trademark weaknesses of a character and can be exploited at the risk of giving one's opponent an advantage. Specialties are a combination of skills, resources, and training that a character can call upon. Unlike power sets, specialties are far more passive in nature, taking a greater stage during transition scenes rather than action moments. While they can be used in an action scene, they'll mainly confer an additional die. Finally, each data file will contain 1-2 experience charts, called milestones, each containing an XP reward for an action that can be qualified for any time, an event changing action, and a character changing action, each worth 1, 5, and 10 experience. These often result in potential story arcs for the character, for good or for bad depending on the situation. XP can be spent during transition scenes to improve power or specialty die, replacing distinctions and modifying limits. Adventures are structured in the form of events. Events tend to be broken down into acts, much like a play or TV episode a concept frequently used in narrativist games. Acts are broken down into action and transition scenes, with each player and GM action being referred to as a panel. The preparation for an act itself is structured into three parts. The setting, where an act takes place, the hook, how the heroes would get involved in the act, and build-up, guidelines for getting the story started. In the aftermath of an act, XP can be spent on either improving your character or on unlockables, which can provide their own potential subplots for the characters. The sample event in the book, Breakout, is a two-act event that is loosely based on New Avengers number 1 through 6. The first act concerns a mass breakout attempt on an island prison for supervillains called The Raft, and the latter pursues the consequences of the breakout into the Savage Land. While the story is fairly straightforward, and I don't want to spoil it here, the book emphasizes exploring possible consequences as a result of the events, even making the second act optional if that's what the players wish to do. Despite some nitpicks, what MHR brings to the table is a unique take on superhero role-playing that is more in line with playing an actual comic book. Once a rhythm is established, it really shows what it's able to accomplish. The hackable nature of the game must also be noted, as I don't think it's a coincidence that a hacker's guide was published a few months after Marvel pulled out of the project. That said, it can be debated whether the crunchier aspects of the game fit with the more narrative-centric goals. I could argue on this either way, but very little is lost if you opt to ignore some of the crunchier aspects, if you wish. The bottom line is that this is a game that needs to be explored, and I hope the rumors of a generic version coming in the following years will be true. For the final score, I give Marvel Heroic Roleplaying a 9 out of 10.